But uh, there's, um, there's two elements that I'm going to run through uh, through this uh, lesson, obviously putting into mind the, the time that we have. Um, there's the change process has got three phases that you go through, which is just generally preparing for change, managing the change, and reinforcing the change. In preparing the change, it's, um, it's why, 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 is the, why is the need for preparation of the change? It is basically to develop a customized and scaled strategy with the necessary sponsorship and team, and team structure, right? Usually in this, in this phase, the key elements that you go through in this phase is you'll be basically conducting an aware, a readiness, a readiness assessment. You need to understand, are people ready to, uh, to go through this change? <laughs> you basically, at some point before you even implement the change, if it's in an organization, you generally might need to come up with a questionnaire that, um, that is set to, to be given to everyone, to every employee, or if it's, if it's possible, maybe if it's a community, you might need to come up with a questionnaire that is posted to that community to find out what is their um, mind towards change, right? That's one of the activities that you have to do in the preparation of change. The second activity that you need to perform is to perform a risk analysis, right? You need to understand, okay, this change that we're going to do, what are the risks involved in it? Right? Is it worth it? Uh, how is it going to impact? Uh, how is it going to impact in terms of our organization? How is it going to impact in terms of the in terms of the profits of the organization itself? How is it going to impact the productivity of the organization? And this change you would find some, especially for even in in, in ministries, uh, COVID came and it has disrupted a lot of uh, a lot of areas. Even you find with ministries, with churches, they now, instead of having um, the gatherings of uh, 2,000, 5,000 and the like, they are now being confounded to having gatherings of just 50 people. Hence, meaning that they, they, there's now a bit of change that people have to be accustomed to in terms of maybe do, having services online. <laughs> you know? And even though after the even after COVID, some people are going to opt to say, you know what, let's carry on with the online services. But then, before you do that, you need to possibly send an assessment or a survey to find out how many people then are okay with having the, to carry on with the online services and how many people would be okay with coming to church uh, in the, at, the, at, the, at the physical building. Some people possibly were with putting back, coming back into the church environment. Some churches have lost buildings in this time because they didn't have any income. Some churches hire certain venues which possibly have been closed down. So obviously to, to, to manage the change, you need to then do that risk assessment to say, okay, fine, if, we are to, if everything goes back to normal, to normal, should we still then look for a building that seats 5,000 people or should we, see, should we look for a building that says 200 people that is much cost effective and, um, and conduct quite a lot of online services? Maybe you might have different campuses in different areas. All right. The next element in uh, preparing for the change is to complete a group impact analysis, right? Where within, even if it's, a, if it's an organization, you, you create groups within that organization uh, possibly it could be the sales team. You find out, okay, how is this, um, how is this change going to affect the sales team? How is it going to affect the administration team? Some people in certain organizations, the marketing department might actually be quite happy with what is happening right now because they now know they've got maybe a wider reach globally because now they are marketing, they, 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 they need to concentrate on or they're pushing more on the online marketing, which is which is more on digital marketing. Which right now, currently, digital marketing is possibly the most effective and cost-effective uh, tool of marketing. So you'd find that as you implement change, the marketing department might be very good with that element 
of digital marketing. But then you get other um, other departments that um, that appreciate the one on ones. You know, you get other departments that appreciate or that want to go to the door of the <laughs> of clients and uh, maybe pitch a new product that they have within that within that uh, organization. All right. Within within the same within the same area of preparing for change, right? You need to anticipate the areas of resistance. As the man of God, Pastor Eric mentioned, you will find with every change in any organization, in any church, in any community, country, or whatever it is, you will find there will be elements of resistance. There are people that will say, ah, you know what? Um, you are moving from uh, you are moving from a clocking system where I come in and possibly sign in a logbook physically. Now you want to do biometrics. <laughs> I don't want to, some people say no. I don't want my fingerprint to be just registered anywhere. Nje. You know, some people um, some people maybe the people that do the data capturing because now you are using biometrics everything is automatically captured within a database. So some people would resist it, saying, possibly I'm going to lose my job, because now I don't have any data that I need to capture, since everything is going to be recorded in a database automatically. So in most cases, the resistance of change comes in when people fear losing their jobs or fear losing their roles within an organization, right? So those are things that you need to anticipate while you are doing the preparation for change, right? In, also, in preparing change, you also need to design special tactics. You need to be creative. <laughs> you don't just um, say, no, this is, this is my way or it's the highway. <laughs> You need to be creative in how you do it. In, in certain areas, in certain organizations, they, they have uh, taken up even the role of uh, uh, assigning people like Dr. David Molapo, uh, a lot of motivational speakers, to come in in the preparation of the change, where you would come in and speak to the organization, to the whole organization, in a creative way. Telling them, no, no, this uh, the change that you are supposed to have uh, that is happening in the organization or that is meant to happen in the organization is very beneficial to the organization. One, it will benefit the organization in productivity. It will benefit the, organiz the organization in finances. It will benefit the organization in efficiency. So people need to be creatively made aware of some of these changes so that they do not have or they do not bring out a block of resistance towards this change. All right. You need to develop an overall strategy, right? Within the preparation, in, within prepare, preparing for change, you need to develop an overall strategy. You do not, when you're preparing for change, you do not do things as and when they come. When you're doing the, pre, the prepare, when you're preparing for the change, you need to anticipate everything until the end, until the change has fully happened within the organization. You need to, when you're doing the analysis, which is the reason why you need to do, uh, you need to do that survey, where you send to all the members of the organization or all the members of the community or all the members of the church to find out, okay, what are the areas they are most likely to resist? Or what are the areas they are most likely to go for? As you, as you gather all that information, it will, help, it will then help you get on to the next phase. Not just the next phase, but it will also then help you implement the change and keep the change in a very strong and effective manner in terms of reinforcing the change. All right. In terms of, uh, while you're also preparing the, for, for the change, you need to prepare your team. All right. You need to there are particular people within an organization that you know if you put this person within the team, your change process would run smoothly. <laughs> All right. We, you find the, the, there are certain people within a, possibly within a company which everyone listens to. You know, it's 
sometimes it may not necessarily be someone in management because um, in, in, in a number of cases, <laughs> managers usually are the ones that are not really liked the most, where people listen to, to managers because of obligation, but not because they want to do it. But you'd find within an organization, there's someone that they just say, hey, when this person speaks, he talks a lot of sense, right? So those are some of the people that you need to then gather up as you're preparing to say, okay, this is the structure or this is the team that I'm going to gather up in, uh, during, this change, during this change process, of which this, these people will then become the change management team. So you need to be very strategic in doing so. In, also, in gathering also your, your team, you need to identify certain people that you think are most likely going to resist, resist the change. <laughs> why do you do that? You bring them in so that they give you the pointers on why are they going to resist the change. And when people are made, are given that role, or are, are told that they're part of this change, it makes it easier for them to understand, or it makes it easier for them to also then speak to their peers in, in regards to saying, no, no, this change is very, it's, it's, it's very beneficial to the organization, to ourselves, and uh, overall, the change is quite okay. So you'd find when you're developing your, your team, or when you're developing the change management team, you need to look at both angles. You need to look at the people that are genuinely going, genuinely going to support you and the people that you feel these people are going to resist. You look for the one that is maybe the most effective person or the most influential person in the people that might resist and bring him on board so that he's the one that will then relay the team to the other people that might uh, actually resist this change. While as well, uh, again, another, act, uh, another element while you're preparing for change is you need to assess the sponsorship, right? What I mean by this is uh, when you're implementing the change, there are certain areas, there are certain, uh, there's a certain budget that you need to, to develop, right? There's, uh, there's a certain, there are certain decision makers within the organization that you need to be in the sponsorship, who are called the sponsors. They are the, they are the ones who will be in the sponsorship structure. So the sponsors are generally the person or the people that will fund the change process, right? Not only fund the change process, they are the same people that will be the final decision makers within this change. Um, this, this, these are the people that after you do your assessments, uh, after you've done your questionnaires, you have done your preparation, you've gathered up your change management team, this is the, these are the people that you then go to and give your reports to so that they themselves buy into the change process. Because if you do not have sponsors, if you do not have decision makers within your team, then you're in trouble because you then get resistance from the management itself. Of which, when you get resistance from from management or from top officials within and within the organization, that possibly might mean you might not even have the finances to run through the change. You see, because you find in a in a lot of organizations, change in itself is very costly. Because you'd find you might then you you possibly need to, from time to time do team building sessions, go out to some resort and um, have uh, fun activities with the whole team. In, in doing so, you then, you then be contextizing or putting awareness to the team on why the need changes, why, why there's need for change. So it's very key, while, it's, while, while it's you're still preparing for the change, to have buy-in from the sponsorship. All right. I don't know, before I get into the phase two, are there any uh, questions? Um, yes, I have a question. Yeah, um, sure. Uh, so listening to you, there's an assumption that uh, this is structured change. You said we do research, holistic, easy to apply, scalable. It's a, this is a structured, anticipated change. But what in the case of uh, COVID? Nobody prepared, nobody expected. There was no anticipation. It just happened. Everything in... Yeah. Uh, Upside down. What do you do? <laughs> How does it apply? What you just thought? I'm talking from a church perspective, the management perspective, management perspective, and schools, churches, companies, organizations, countries. Yeah. We're just in there, unexpected, unexpected. 
That's <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> to be honest, COVID really did um, uh, it abruptly changed generally everything within any sector of business or religion or <laughs> or community. COVID just generally changed everything. <laughs> okay, abruptly things just changed within a space of possibly a week, you know, or possibly a month, you know, where uh, all of a sudden you're told with in in three days the whole nation is going to is going to go into, into lockdown, right? So it was it was an element of the government from the top implementing and change management structure, which possibly they did in um, implementing that lockdown, right? But in doing so, possibly the in terms of the churches or in terms of organizations, you would find in the, in the corporate, there was, a, there was a need for change management to then happen in, in regards to people working from home, right? But because it happened abruptly, it was a bit of a shake. But in it being a shake, it, it then needed as an element of, uh, of one, the sponsorship or a change management team to be implemented with immediate effect at that particular time. You see, you'd find uh, during this time, uh, Bill Gates, possibly about some, some years ago, <laughs> he mentioned that the whole world might need to prepare for something like this. <laughs> and uh, people, some people do not take him seriously. And it, it, it then happened that uh, a virus uh, happened, broke out, and uh, lockdowns happened uh, generally. But you'd find, because of what happened is, immediately, as, an, as, a, as the head of an organization, within a space of possibly the first two weeks, there was need to then start implementing or... Uh, obviously, the preparation phase was going to be a bit difficult because you didn't have that much time. But then you were, you then needed to get into the into managing the change, which is the section that I'm going to be um, that I'm going to be talking of right now. But because of that abrupt uh, area, preparing for change was a bit hectic. But you needed to then immediately engage into phase two, which maybe I'll then encourage uh, maybe the people that are within your circle. If you can speak to them to say, you know what, um, they need to prepare for change at any given time. They need to, in most cases, a lot of organizations, they probably have a project manager or they possibly have a COO, uh, an operation officer that in within his right should understand the whole process of change management. All right. Okay. Thanks. All right. So in phase two, which is an area which possibly might then also help in answering your question, is why is the need for, for, for that phase two? The phase two in managing change is to create and implement plans that will move individuals and organizations through change. To create and implement plans that will move individuals and organizations into, through the change process. All right. The main activities that usually happen within, within this area are you need to create a plan of communication. <laughs> All right. So with, uh, with the fourth industrial revolution, um, communication for some reason has become a, a bit easier uh, in regards to, uh, you know, there's emails, there's WhatsApp, um, there's now Telegram, which for some reason people are preferring to over WhatsApp because of privacy policies. Um, there's just general the phone calls, right? So as you, as you develop the change, as you get into the change process, the first area that you need to plan for is the communication. COVID happened and all of a sudden, within two days, you need to be on lockdown. How are you going to communicate to the employees that uh, your people, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in two days, we're going to be working from home. What is the most cost-effective and what is the best communication tool that you can use to communicate to the staff? Because some people, before the lockdown happened, a lot of people already, because of fear, were, had already drawn back. 
<laughs> to waking from home to say, you know what, I'm not leaving my house because I'm definitely not going to catch this COVID. I'm not going to risk myself. But because of those people, then you needed to have that communication strategy because obviously some people are not going to come to the boardroom on the, in that particular week. So you need to develop that, communica that, com that communication plan and also implement it in fact, immediately. Meaning that even at this particular time, you, you might need to have a situation where you create within organizations, within departments, you create things like WhatsApp groups, you know, where the sales team would have their own WhatsApp communication group, uh, the, the workshop team would have their own WhatsApp group, and the management team would also have their own WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp group. You identify maybe people that will become group administrators of uh, certain WhatsApp groups. Those group administrators report directly to you within another WhatsApp group. That way you find a lot of inform information would, take, would possibly give and take 10 minutes for it to, to reach the whole organization, maybe an organization, an organization of 1,000 or 10,000. Within a space of 10 minutes through WhatsApp or through certain other messaging platforms, people can actually uh, receive uh, communication on what is happening within the organization at that particular time. All right. So another, another section, another activity that you then need to implement in managing the change is in uh, coaching. Right. Coaching would be in the, in the element of, because of COVID, obviously, maybe people cannot go to the offices or cannot sit in, um, in, the, in the auditorium. But you might need to um, implement a, an area where you employ uh, uh, consultants, you know, possibly like someone like Dave, Dr. David Molapo or Dr. Dan or myself or anyone who's in that motivational or coaching space to, to give coaching to the people to say, okay, this is the change that we're going through. But how is this change going to affect you? But in, in as much as it is affecting you, these are the things that you need to do or these are the things that you need to implement within yourself as an individual in adapting to the change. This can also be through upskilling the people within the organization. It's, say, um, the, um, there's, there's an element of now there's biometrics that has been implemented within the organization and um, there's no need for data captures, uh, for people that will do data capturing. But the same people that are doing data capturing are possibly the people that can be upskilled and moved into other administration areas. And for them to get into those areas, they'll definitely need some coaching from, from either consultants or other people. So this is coaching and training as well uh, in, 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 regards to up, in, in regards to upskilling themselves and managing the change. Another activity that you go through in managing the change is the resistance management, right? Resistance management is easier to plan for it, especially when you have someone within the change management team who was most likely to be the most resistant person. <laughs> you will see, you will find that within that person, sitting down with them, obviously with the um, the assessments that you have done before during the preparation, you can then mitigate it and find out, okay, this, this, there's a loophole there. How are we going to manage this resistance, right? Well, 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 how are we going to... Uh, some people generally need motivation, just general motivation, sitting down under a motivational speaker for, a, for two hours. That's what other people may just need. Some people who may just need to be given incentives or they just need to be given some form of mod some form of um, maybe something of material value to them to say you know what because the company is going to, is changing and is going to be won't be using as much finances on certain areas all of you are possibly going to then get um, transport allowance give and take you know that these these things depend on different organizations right so you need to develop a plan for resistance management, right? So in phase three, you're generally reinforcing the change. 
This is, this is an area where, obviously, you collect, analyze, collect and analyze the feedback, diagnose the gaps and managing resistance, implement corrective actions, and celebrate success. Right. The main, the main areas, the main activities while you are now in this, in this phase in reinforcing the change is this is an area where the change process has actually happened or it is in its final stages where now everyone now understands or now knows why <laughs> uh, that the change has happened or this is the change that is happening at that particular time, right? So in this phase, the first and foremost thing is you need to be proactively, proactively collect feedback and listen to the employees, right? You need to do another survey with the organization and collect feedback from all of them to say, you know what, within the past three years or within the past two weeks, we implemented a change management process. How do you feel about it? Right? Are you happy with the change? Or where do you think we can improve on this change process? Usually at this time is you then you would have mitigated or managed the resistance. But now the feedback that you're getting is feedback that would just help you reinforce it. Where you, re, where you re, re, reinforce the, the resistance management that you have gone through. Where you implement an, a, a structure or um, an activity that will make people adapt to the change. Right? So you need to again do another survey where people will, will answer and give you feedback on understand on how they've gone through or what they've gone through uh, during the change process. Right? You need to audit the compliance with the new way of doing things. <laughs> All right. Now there's a new way of doing things. So you need to then do an, an audit within the organization. Good, okay, fine. What is the compliance on this? How 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 people how are people taking it? How are people taking the new way of doing things? How are people taking uh, wearing the wearing of masks? <laughs> you know, okay, the wearing of masks it, it has come, but how are we going to manage it? It's it's something that has to happen, but we need to also make it. We need to reinforce it. How are we going to reinforce it? Because some people are not comfortable with it, but we need to tell them, but no, no, if you don't wear your mask, these are the risks that are involved. You know, you, you get droplets that will fall on you, and now there's a second variant which is, which, which hooks. Apparently, this, uh, the, new, the, the second variant so for somehow hooks onto your system and captures, uh, and it's more kind of, it gets the, the, the effects of it are quite fast, right? You need to, within reinforcing the change, you need to identify the gaps and the areas of resistance and manage them again. And you see, with every change process, again, as the man of God has said, you will get resistance and you will find throughout the whole process, you are managing that resistance. Even after the changes happened, that resistance will still need to be managed. And you still need to follow through on the plans on, on, that, on the plans that you would have put in place while you were managing the change, in managing that resistance, right? In, in, in other areas, another way of reinforcing this change, you need to celebrate the success, right? What do I mean by this? Um, uh, change has happened, right? Um, you possibly at maybe at the year end function you will celebrate possibly a, a, a particular department to say you know what in this year we went through a change process but we would like to commend the sales department for adapting effectively to this change you know um, it, it may not be just generally just a department but it can also be um, even an individual to say, you know, this person during the change, we want to appreciate the way this person would come, would dish out the, the surveys or how this person would, uh, you know, it's not just management that needs to be celebrated. Even the janitors 
all of them need to be celebrated during this uh, during this process which both you find in the corridors people talk <laughs> you see and it could be someone who works just in the kitchen that could drop uh, a bad seed to someone in management and uh, and it would affect the whole change process you know <laughs> so it's one of those things where you need just to generally celebrate everyone to say you know what we we thank you for understanding that you know what we are now we have now implemented um, the biometric system, or now we, have, we are now implement we are now using uh, motorcycles instead of using something that's heavy on fuel like cars and the like for doing our deliveries. So we just want to thank you for accept for playing for going with us, and within this process we are still going to work with you through throughout the whole process. All right, so. In this, mainly, usually when you're, um, there's a there's a there's a very effective model that was that is that was designed by ProSci. It's uh, one of the most effective change management companies in the world. They developed a system which is called the Adka system. What is the Adka system? The Adka system is. Within the organization or within the change management process, you need to create awareness. Um, in, the, in creating awareness, you need to understand, there, there needs to be, the people need to understand why is this change? Why, what is the reason for this change, right? What is the nature of this change? People will ask, why is the change needed? In this place, in this, in this, uh, in this organization, why do we need to change? So you need to be have a, a serious awareness program on how you get people conscientized, or how you train the people, or how you teach the people, or how you convey your message to the people on why why is the need for change, right? People, other people within the awareness section section will ask will be asking, what is the risk of not changing? You know. Those are things that you need to answer during this awareness area where you say, okay, you know what? We're going to do this change. The risks that are involved in us not changing are that uh, the world has gone digital. So we cannot carry on using analog systems in our communication. If we carry on using analog systems, they're going to become obsolete and we will not be able to, we will not be able to communicate within the organization. So the risk is, is quite, it's far much more than us <laughs> implementing this change. We need, to impl we need to move on to the next, uh, the next section. Right now the world is now in 5G. And you'd find a number of, um, a number of cell phones that, um, that, 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 are, that, that are still in 2G. Some of them don't even work anymore, right? You'll find even with Apple, for those that use Apple devices, iPhones, You'd um, iPhones like the iPhone 5 uh, already certain applications cannot work on the iPhone 5. You know, certain applications cannot work even on Android phones. So some people would need to be aware to be, to be made aware. Of, you know, what? for if you carry on using this system, there are certain applications that will not work with the with the new system or the way the new way of doing business, right? After the, in the acronym ATCA, the next section is the desire. You need to create the desire within the people that you are implementing this change process for. You know, there's an element, there's a, there's a, there's a question that a lot of people will ask. What's in it for me? <laughs> you know, this change that you're doing, how is it going to benefit me? How is it going to benefit my family? How is it going to benefit my department? It's more of a personal thing. So you need to create that desire within the person to say, to say you know what, this is going to benefit you in one, two, three, four, five ways. It's going to make you more effective or it's going to make you more efficient. It's going to ease up on pressure or in terms of you writing down documents or typing out things to, for, for data capturing. You know, that's what's in it for you. So you need to create a desire within the people. You know, you need to make it a personal choice. The people within the organization need to then 
make it a personal choice. They need to desire it within themselves to say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to listen to what these people are saying. And I also now just want to desire, I desire to change with the organization as well. That way you even get less resistance you know, the, during the change process, you know. You know, you need to get people to make decisions to engage and participate within the change process, right? This is a whole element of the desire, creating the desire within the people, right? After creating the desire, there's an element of now giving knowledge in the acronym ATKA, the K, knowledge to the people, right? You need to make them understand how to change, right? There's... um. Uh, within the department, what are the things that they need to do in, in regards to changing on how they need to change, right? What are the certain courses that they need to take within that department that will help them within, through this change process? You need to give them that knowledge. Some people within that department, within certain departments or within certain areas of an organization, you might need to take them to certain classes, you know, that will upskill them. You know, the, in, in upskilling them, in them understanding or having to um, have the knowledge of what is going to happen after the change has, has gone through, right? You need to implement uh, areas of training, you know, on the uh, training on the new processes and how to use the new tools. You know, which, uh, firstly, possibly using a clocking system that you need to use a typewriter for when you're typing, but now you're using a laptop. Some people will need to go through training on how to use the laptop, you know. You need to implement ways of people learning the new skills in, in, line, with the change, in, in line with the change process, right. In the acronym ATKA, you then, get people, you then get the A, another A, which is the ability, right. Demonstrate... It is the demonstrated capability to implement the change, right? You need to give people the, the, the required direction in them having that ability to accept this change. All right. And then, um, okay, I'm looking at the time. I don't want to keep you too much um, because some of this is a bit of a repetition. In the acronym ATKA, the last letter, which is ARA, is reinforcement, right? The actions that increase the likelihood that a change will be that the change will be continued, and recognition and rewards of certain areas of the change. All right, I think um, that possibly concludes your crash course <laughs> on change management as an overview.